Hello. Today we are going to start our third unit, uh, unit three. Uh, you can tell by this table of contents here, it's kind of a long unit, but I think you will find that a lot of what we're going to talk about you have learned um, in pre-algebra, and we will just continue to review it and add pieces to it um, to, I guess, make it come together a little bit more. So today we're going to look at number day one, rate of change in slope. So if you want to make your way to day one. So I have a little vocabulary I'm going to have you write down and then we're going to talk about slope, talk about how it's basically a rate of change and kind of use those terms interchangeably. So uh, first item here, rate of change, it is a relationship between two quantities. Relationship between two quantities. A relationship bet between two quantities. Okay, so that is our definition of rate of change. And so rate of change equals, uh, we're going to write a couple formulas down here. So I want you to make a really large, this is a fraction bar. So in the numerator of this fraction, I'm going to write change in dependent variable. Change in dependent variable. Okay. Change in dependent variable. And let's put y in parentheses because our dependent variable is y in our equations. And then in the, new, the denominator, we're going to have change in independent variable. Change in independent variable. Okay, and that, of course, it goes with the x. And so a shorter way to write this is the word change um, in math and science can re be represented by um, what's called a delta. So delta is a way to say change and it's represented with a triangle. So over here to the side I'm going to write what looks like a triangle Y over triangle X. And so the way I would say that to myself I would say change in Y change in X. So change in Y over change in X. So um, when you see I'm gonna also add the word delta, it's a Greek letter. When you see a triangle and you know it's standing for a Greek letter, that is gonna be our delta. So we're looking for the change in Y over change in X. Okay, so let's apply that to these two tables below. So when I'm talking about change, so how is five changing to eight? How is eight changing to 11? And so oftentimes when you're trying to, de to determine the change between five and eight, you're really subtracting the two. So you could probably look at this and say, well, I'm just going to add 3 to get up to 8. So I'm going to maybe go like this, plus 3. But if I were to reverse it and say 8 minus 5, I get 3. Okay, so if you're dealing with a fraction or a decimal where you can't see that difference very quickly, you're going to need to go back to taking basically the second number minus the first. So 8 up to 11, that's another increase of plus 3, 11 up to 14. So my change in Y looks like three. Let's do change in X. Four plus two is six, plus two more gives me eight, and then so I'm looking like my change is two. So if I do change in Y over change in X, three over two is my rate of change. And we're simply doing slope here, okay? We're simply subtracting the Y's divided by subtracting the X's, and it's just another way of, of finding slope. Okay, but I want you to, to be aware or start seeing that rate of change is a slope. So I want you to pause the video and I would like you to do the rate of change on the second table here. All right, I am going down by one, down by one, down by one, and then the X's look like they're going a plus four, another plus four, plus four. So my rate of change is negative one-fourth, or that's also my slope. Okay, so when you are asked to find the rate of change, you're finding the slope. They, they're the same thing. 
Okay, let's continue on. Let's continue to do rate of change, but let's then add in here, well, what does it mean? What does it have to do with time and temperature um, as our labels here? Okay, rate of change, I'm thinking change in Y over change in X. So that delta Y over delta X. Okay, so let's determine that change in Y. So here's where you might wanna subtract or know that negative two all the way up to positive seven is going up by nine. Because if you think about a number line, I'm going from zero, I'm sorry, negative two, and then I have to go two units to get to zero, and then seven more to get up to seven. So this is going up by nine. Or you could do seven minus negative two. That also gives you nine. Um, seven up to 16 is also a plus nine. 16 to 25 plus nine. Okay, so our change in Y is nine. One up to four, it's going up by three. Okay, looks like I'm a plus three here. We'll just verify that. Okay, I have to have the same change in Y over change in X. So I've got a positive nine over positive three. Let's reduce it down though. You could reduce it to three over one. You could also go one step further to say three. Okay, so um, I'm gonna add my label here, rate of change. Um, you can leave it as three over one or three. And so that's really kind of the answering the first part of the directions. Okay, what does this mean? So since the three came out of the Y's, that is a temperature change. So I could interpret that for every increase of three degrees, what's happening over here, this is also going up by three, or really if we reduce it down to one. So every one hour, so our temperature is increasing by three degrees every hour. Uh, so what does this mean? Um, how about we say increase of temperature um, three degrees Fahrenheit per hour. Okay, that's a unit rate from last unit. Um, you could also say that the temperature is going up three degrees every hour, something to that effect. Again, that's just a slope. All right, so rate of change, change in Y over change in X, and then just a little bit of interpreting. Okay, number two, the graph shows the altitude of an airplane as it comes in for a landing. Find the rate of change, okay, and then let's explain what this means. Okay, so rate of change. So we could go off of the table, or I'm sorry, off of the graph, okay, but I can clearly see it's not increments of one here. Um, it, we could also make a little table here. So let's do this approach for this one here, and then you can kind of decide on future examples what's easier for you. Okay, so I'm gonna line up my, um, you know, my independent and dependent variable, kind of like an X and a Y. So my time, is like my X variable or my, you know, independent. So let's make a little T chart here. So I'm gonna do time, altitude, which is in terms of feet. So I can come back to those labels at the end when I explain. So let's list out some ordered pairs here. So it looks like this 180 comma zero is this ordered pair right here. It's for some reason kind of over to the side a little. So let's add that in 180 and then zero. And then this dot right here is 60 comma 1000, 60, 1000. Okay, so let's do change in Y over change in X. Change in Y over change in X. So from zero up to 1000, that's an increase of 1000. So there's your change in Y. From 180, it's going down, so it's a negative increase. Okay, so you could you could do 60 minus 180. Um, that way, you can get your you know your signs correct here. Um, so that is going down by 120. Okay, so we've got a thousand over 120. So let's let's divide that out and see what we get here. We'll, we're gonna get a decimal, but we'll go back to a fraction. Oops, 120. 
Okay, 8.33. Let's go back and leave it as a fraction. So um, I'll add the negative back in there. So just kind of a little tip on these calculators. F to D right here above the PRB key, if I do second F D and hit enter, is that says eight and one third. If I want it as an improper fraction, this A, B, C to D, E goes from mixed to improper. So if I do that other key, there's a 25 over three. Now I could also look at this and say, well, I know I can divide by 10 and then I can just keep dividing by numbers to get me down to the lower or, or reduced fraction. So I'm gonna bring the negative kind of out to the front. Negative 25 over three, or it could be a negative and then 25 over three. But there is my rate of change, negative 25 thirds. So let's explain what this means. Okay, and it might, um, we could go back to the decimal or let's just go with our labels. 25 are the Y's and that has to do with the, um, sorry, the altitude. So if it's, if the whole thing is negative, I've got a decrease and I can tell by my line, it's a decreasing line. So my altitude, or this is about an airplane landing. So the airplane, let's say every, if it's going down by 25 feet, and how long is that happening over a span of? Every three seconds. So the airplane is descending, I guess, 25 feet every three seconds, okay? Um, or you could say the altitude is decreasing 25 feet every three seconds. However you want to phrase that, it's fine. Let me just, I'll tie in altitude since that's the label. See, so let's say the altitude is decreasing. Oops. Altitude is decreasing 25 feet every three seconds. Right. So kind of circle that. Now, if we wanted to do a more unit rate, if I turn that into a back to a decimal, so we could say the altitude is decreasing eight and a third feet every second. Okay, so we could go one further step, but I wanted to link it back in with this rate of change. Okay, um, I'd like you guys to do this extra example here. Pause the video. Same idea, find the rate of change, explain what it means, and then when you come back to the video, I will walk through the answers with you. Okay, um, I'm just starting to make a little table. Uh, you can have just two values. I just went ahead and did three. So I can see here it's going up by 50, um, going up here by ones. So my um, change in Y over change in X is 50 over one, or I guess you could just say 50. Go ahead and just put a box around 50 over one. So what does this mean? So everything's positive and you can tell by the graph it's going up. So the distance traveled, so the automobile is traveling, the distance traveled is 50 miles every one hour. So going 50 miles every hour, so that's also a rate, 50 miles an hour, uh, but we'll leave it in terms of labels here. Distance traveled, Uh, let's say goes up 50 miles every hour. Or I guess you could say the car is traveling 50 miles every hour. I'm not sure going up makes sense with, with distance, but increasing 50 miles every hour. Okay, um, I'm going to stop this video, and then if you would go on to the next video to uh, work those, last, those examples out on the next page.